Hello and welcome back. Today I thought I would share some of the things that I've currently got bookmarked, that I've been eyeing up, that are potentially on my wish list. Uh, I have this real habit of basically saving everything that I think is really beautiful, that aesthetically just really calls my name and that even if it's not necessarily something I could wear as part of my everyday life, it's perhaps something my fantasy self would buy, I still can't help but bookmark it and I like to go back to it. Eventually after a few weeks I'll usually delete it from my bookmarks or if I've had it in my Karma account I'll delete it from there as well. But essentially I thought today we could just chat through some of the things that I've been eyeing up. I suppose another title for this would be my very very unrealistic wish list. So I've got a bunch of tabs open on my laptop and I thought we would just go through all of them one by one and actually I want to start with an item that I'm very much contemplating purchasing this week. I have been thinking about buying these particular pants for months <laughs> and given that we're coming to the tail end of winter I feel like my window of opportunity to actually be able to wear these for a good amount of time is coming to a close so I really need to buy them very soon if I want. They're from Witchery, they're a white cord jean. Now I actually used to have a pair of cord trousers like this from Everlane and I don't know why but I decided to sell them. This was I think either before we had our son or after but I clearly wasn't in my right mind because ever since then I've been thinking about cord trousers and I actually have a black pair which is from uh, a small Australian brand called Unique Space which I'll link their website down below but these ones I really like because they're a straight cut they've got a really nice high rise uh, and yeah I just like the cord texture I think it's a really fun uh, playful element to add into your outfits over the colder months it is something that does take me back to my youth but in a good way and I thought these were really nice. I also like them in the other colors too. They come in this beautiful kind of acorn brown and then in a black as well. So those are something I may actually end up buying this week. And then while I was browsing the Witchery website, I actually saw this beautiful top. And again, this is something I'm toying with buying even though it's not 100% practical for my everyday life right now. I thought this would be the perfect work blouse. It's called the Satin Twist Neck Blouse. Comes in a few colors, but navy is the one that really caught my eye. I think it's a really nice alternative. If you want to add some contrast to your outfits, but you find that black is just a little bit too harsh against your complexion, especially if you have a fairer skin tone. What I love about this particular top is the twist detail at the neckline and also the fact that the cuffs seem a little bit longer. And I like the fact that they almost have the split effect to them and it's just a keyhole closure at the back. Satin has that silk look but it's a lot easier to maintain and care for so I thought that's a really great one if you've been thinking about adding in some beautiful tops to your work wardrobe. Then I saw two striped tops on Witchery. I'm not going to buy these but I thought I would just quickly give them a shout out because I liked them. So the first is a linen blend striped top so again that is just definitely tugging at my heartstrings as far as stripes are concerned because anything that has linen blended in as part of the composition I generally know that I'm going to like and to me this kind of looks like it's got a very sort of soft hand feel to it something that is going to drape really beautifully and and that's definitely quality I look for in my striped tops. Uh, also, I have to say I really like the diversity of the models that they've used on the Witchery website. just thought this was a really nice one. I particularly like the light blue stripe. And then the other striped top that I saw on the website, which I thought was a bit different, it's an off-the-shoulder striped top. This appeals to me in so many different ways, despite me knowing that it's probably not something that I would personally end up wearing day to day. I can really appreciate it from afar. The off-shoulder detail, the dolman sleeves, those both really appeal to me because I think it creates a really interesting and unique shape. It feels a little bit more playful and it just feels like a modern take on your Breton striped top. This is definitely another case of me sort of looking in terms of my fantasy self. So again, one I'm not going to add to cart, but I do think it's really lovely and actually I really like how they paired it with the pinstripe skirt on the styling on the website. You probably heard me talk about facade pattern and I think they've really become one of my favorite brands this year. I've got two pairs of trousers from them, a long linen trouser and then also these cropped wool trousers which I've worn so many times and I spotted that they are doing a Bermuda short version and I really like a Bermuda short. I think that they're kind of camp in a cool way and to have that same pleat detail at the front which is really exaggerated and is really quite a striking detail, I adore. They come in white. They actually have jeans as well in the same style and again something I would really like to add to cart. So have been thinking about those. 
I do have a white short already in my wardrobe. It's a belted style, but I think these ones feel a little bit more relaxed and given how much I love my trousers from Fazar Pattern, I feel like these would be a great addition to my closet as well. Uh, and these are a cotton rayon blend. I thought we'd move on to the Cezanne website and there's quite a lot that I like on the website, but when I'm realistic about what I'm going to wear and actually think about it quite rationally, there's two pieces that are really calling my name. And the first is the Betty cardigan in the Ecru color. I actually wanted to buy this the first time around and I can't remember why I didn't. I think it is really, really lovely in the fact that it can be worn open like a little jacket or just that third piece of your outfit, but also you can wear it like a little cardigan tucked into something, almost like a, a jumper. I probably size up in this to the medium, so I've got a little bit more room. Uh, I want it to kind of look on me the way it does on the model and uh, especially the um, in the photo where the model is wearing it with the matching cream trousers that I think aesthetically it's very pleasing on my eye. I love a tonal look and you know how much I love my neutrals. I mean, I'm wearing essentially a very similar uh, iteration of that outfit today. And I just, I like the big tortoiseshell buttons. I like the fact that there are the pockets on the chest. To me, it's just a really sweet piece. And I was really pleased to see that this is 100% merino wool. Looking at the photos, it looks like the yarn has been woven really tightly to give it a bit of structure so that it actually doesn't just flop over and it sort of can stand up on its own. So that's the first piece from Cezanne that I'm loving. And then the second piece is the Max shirt, in particular in the chambray. Now, it's been years since I've had a chambray shirt in my closet. I think that they're a really, really great little basic to have. And it was something that I wore a lot, especially when we lived back in Wellington. I really like the tone of blue that they've used on this shirt in particular. And uh, I think that that can be something which is a little bit tricky to find when you are adding a blue shirt to your closet, especially when you're dealing with your own undertones. So finding one that is the right one for your complexion. This very much looks on par with what it is that I'm trying to add to my closet and essentially the direction that my wardrobe has been going in. Uh, and of course it's 100% organic cotton. So I love that. Um, I'm really enjoying seeing that they're using a lot more organic cotton in their uh, collections. Okay, let's move on to COS. And we've got this really, really cool dark green knit tank. I have two very similar tanks from Uniqlo U. Uh, I got them, must have been, it was a bit over a year ago. And they've really been some of the best essentials I've had in my closet. I've actually reached for them year round. They are fantastic. And they're this particular cut and silhouette. And actually I've got one from Everlane behind me too, which I absolutely adore. I'm going to link that one down below because that's also a really fantastic option and it's a cotton one as well. I really like this deeply saturated, almost gem toned green. I think it is really vibrant and rich and it's got so much depth to it, but it doesn't feel too outside of my comfort zone. And it feels like something I could very easily pair back with all the neutrals I've already got in my closet. And again, it's organic cotton. It's going to be easy to care for because you can throw it in the washing machine. These are sorts of the things that I think about a lot when I am contemplating what I'm going to add to my wardrobe. So that is definitely a very high up there on my list of maybes and would be a great item to have in my closet for the spring summer months in particular just to add in that little bit of color without going overboard. Okay, let's move on to Camilla Remarque. And this is very much an example of something that I am admiring from afar, but I know doesn't really have any practical place in my wardrobe. I mean, if I went out a lot, definitely. This is called the Brixton dress and my gosh, is it just beautiful. It is stunning. I adore the details around the bust, how there's this little keyhole cut out. It feels sexy, but in a very kind of elevated and not so overt way. And I like that. I like the fact that the uh, actual neckline, it has this curved detail to it. It feels very soft. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's any harsh lines. It's essentially a pinafore dress in a way, and it does have the adjustable straps at the back, which I think is great because then you can essentially adjust it to fit. Uh, it's very kind of straight cut through the body though. So when I look at that on the model, it looks amazing on her, but knowing that uh, my hip area is a little bit wider, I am a pear shape. I don't know that this would actually look that great on me, especially because I can't really tell how stretchy it would be either. I'd, I'd really have to go and try this on in person. But I don't really have anywhere to wear this and I have so many beautiful dresses already that I don't wear enough or often enough. So 
I think that this would be surplus to requirement for sure, but I did think it was really stunning and I thought I would share it because I think if you've got any really beautiful occasions coming up, uh, something to celebrate, then this could be a stunning option. Oh, okay, let's move on to more of a winter appropriate accessory, which I absolutely do not need. It is a scarf from Acne. I've gone in, I've seen this in store. I've been going back to it over and over. It is just, it's living rent free in my mind. And I know how impractical this is for me. So I live in Sydney, right? And our winters are so mild. I get asked a lot, do my ankles get cold in the winter time? Because I'm often wearing a shoe that does expose a little bit of my skin. And the answer is no. I mean, I'm just gonna check, I'm just gonna check what the temperature is today because I think it is gonna be quite a nice day. Okay, so it's gonna be a high of 17. So not super hot, but also not super cold. And when I lived in Wellington, I would be wearing a singlet and a denim mini skirt when it was 17 degrees. So I'm here in a knit, but I know in the middle of the day, I'm not gonna need a jacket, I'm not gonna need a coat, I'm definitely not going to need a scarf. I already have three amazing scarves. I've got two Acne Canada scarves, and then I have a really beautiful wool cashmere one from Everlane. And that really is enough for me. I don't necessarily need any more. This to me is more something that has caught my eye because I'm very, very intrigued and drawn to the color palette. It has those sort of sagey greens and that deep, forest green which you may have been able to tell from some of my recent buys is something that is just calling to me. I am inexplicably drawn to it. I think it's a really nice soft way to add colour into your wardrobe. I like that it's kind of paired back with more neutrals and it's sort of this checkerboard uh, design as well in terms of how the colour has been laid out. So all those things are quite alluring to me and really why I can't stop thinking about the scarf despite knowing that it's a bit of an impractical purchase because I don't I don't need it. I don't even wear the scarves that I've got. I actually can't remember the last time I wore a scarf, maybe when I went to New Zealand. So, and that was years ago. So yeah, uh, <laughs> one that I don't need, but I love. I'm gonna be admiring that one from afar, I think. Actually, also, let's just go to another item that I really love on Farfetch, which is in my wish list. I don't know how you pronounce this designer. Charlotte Chennai, maybe? I, I That's how I would pronounce it. I'm very into this. I have been loving mixing metals for a really long time. You've probably seen me do this or mention it in my previous videos. I think that gold and silver paired together, it feels really modern and fresh, especially after so many years of not mixing metals. And this one I like because I've been wanting to get a second piercing in both my earlobes for years now, but the opportunity to do so hasn't really arisen and I'm still um, nursing, so I don't really feel like now's the time to be going and getting another piercing. So this to me feels like a way that I can essentially have that second piercing look in my earlobe without actually going through with it. Uh, so something that could tide me over in the meantime. It is really expensive though, 517 Australian dollars for this one earring. So that's quite a bit of money. I mean, in terms of how I'd wear it, I'd probably either just wear another single hoop on the other side or a little diamond stud or a gold stud, something like that, that would balance it out. I quite like having mismatched earrings. This is just something I'm very much a bit smitten with. So if you've tried anything from this brand, I would love to know because I think buying jewelry like this that is it technically, you know, it's plated jewelry. If you haven't purchased from the brand before, it can be very hard to know how it's gonna wear and tear over time, so. That's something I'd be curious to know. Okay, I have a little wish list piece from Quince. I've had a request to do a Quince review. I hear you, I wanna do that for sure because uh, I have some great items from the brand in my wardrobe. One of the items that I would really like to buy is one of their washable silk skirts. Now, I actually have a kind of champagne-y colored skirt from Beckenbridge. I've had it for a few years now, but it has not worn very well at all. The actual texture of the fabric, it almost has this little rippled effect to it, but it uh, does pull really easily. And mine has not only pulled, but it has pilled as well, especially down the side. So when you look up close, you can kind of see those imperfections and it does annoy me. I think it'd be nice to get something like this to replace it, uh, maybe in the sort of slate gray color or again, just in the champagne that they have. Uh, it looks to be a nice length just below the knee, which I like. And I think, yeah, it's got an elasticated waistband, which is my preferred when it comes to slip skirts like this. I really like to wear slip skirts with 
very chunky knits and I think that they can be a great piece to wear for the office as well for something that's a little bit more slinky. Dial back though obviously with your tailoring uh, I, there are some really easy ways to do that but I just think it's a really really versatile one that can suit many different occasions. Okay I did also save a few items from and of the stories down. Now this first one I just wanted to mention because it reminds me of the skirt I've already got from Jill Sander which I bought loved it's a boucle knit mini skirt and I mean you know how much I love texture I just think if you're wearing a tonal outfit or just in general I just think it's really nice to have those soft tactile elements in your outfit and to me I just want to reach out and touch the skirt it just looks so fuzzy and so soft I think this one has yeah it's got an elasticated waistband it's a wool alpaca mini skirt with a boucle knit finish so that is going to be one that's going to be so nice and fuzzy to the touch. And I think even if you were wearing a very basic minimal outfit, if you have the skirt on, it's kind of going to be the hero of your outfit. It's going to steal the show because of that beautiful texture and how visually interesting it is. So I wanted to mention that one. Um, not one I'm going to buy because I've already got a very similar skirt. But what I am very much eyeing up are these belted silk trousers in the black. These look so nice, they're 100% silk. They have the single pleat down the front, which I think is really, really flattering. The length looks nice and long, so it's gonna be a really elongating style. I like the fact that they've paired it with a chunky sandal on the model on the website, because that makes me see that they would actually look really great with some of the chunkier sandals that I already own. These have a D-ring belt, which to me adds a little bit of edginess to the uh, the silhouette as opposed to it feeling so prim and proper which I think a tailored trouser sometimes can do so but yeah that with a little tank in the summer months I think it'd be really nice uh, also it's got the pockets too but I just think the cut of them looks really really good it's a recycled silk as well which I don't think I've seen that too much I don't know I mean it's a classic I've already got stuff like this in my closet do not need them but they are very, very nice. Uh, if, if the past few years have taught me anything, it's that I'm really constantly drawn towards the same sorts of items and uh, I'm always on the hunt for the perfect, perfect whatever it is. Even though I know that there's no such thing of, as perfect, I'm just a very fickle person and as my tastes change, I sort of feel like my wardrobe needs to reflect that as well. And sometimes it can be a really subtle shift and I don't think we necessarily always need to lean into this and I probably only allow myself to indulge because of the sheer fact that I am sharing what I'm wearing online, I'm, I'm sharing styling advice, outfit ideas. I think if it weren't for that I would just stick to what I have and be very happy and content with it. So I do just want to flag that and also just reinforce that. Just because a new season has come around doesn't mean you need to buy something new. If you've already got things in your wardrobe that you absolutely love, that you're absolutely excited to wear, that you still feel amazing in, then you should absolutely love wear, use those things uh, rather than think about replacing them with something new. So I did just want to flag that. Oh, okay. Final thing from the end of the stories website. This is so out of the box for me, but it is this flame red dress. The sort of fringe detail at the hemline, it's a midi length. I like the fact that the sleeves have a split cuff detail again. That's something that I'm always really drawn to because I think it gives you a bit more coverage on the hand uh, while still being actually quite practical. It does have the little mock neck as well so you've got a bit of extra coverage. The colour though, it is divine, it's sensational. I love how it's got this really vibrant orange hue to it. It reminds me a little bit of MAC Morange, I think the lipstick. Really, really into this, and it's made from that Eco Vero lensing material as well, so you know it's going to be really nice and soft. Now, here I was thinking that I was going to chat through everything really quickly, and turns out I've been a chatty Cathy and I've still got quite a few tabs open here. Let's try and speed through these last ones. Okay, so from Lover, I've been eyeing up this Georgia quilted coat. I don't need any more jackets, I don't need any more coats, but I still love this. I like the fact that it has the fold over collar, I like the quilted detail on it, the large patch pockets on the hips. I think it's actually a re reasonable price as well and it's a cotton jacket, so a really nice option if that's something you've been looking at. I, I really like the fit and the snap button closure. It's cute. I think this would be really nice worn with a uh, sort of jeans, so I think now, actually, I'm going to talk myself out of it. I do not need this jacket. Uh, but I thought that one was really sweet. And then also on the iconic, another item I've been looking at are these 
padded twist heels from Air, the label. I think these are reminiscent of something from Bottega potentially, kind of has that vibe to them. I really like the cream leather. I think they are super fun and fresh for the spring summer season. They look like they'd be really comfortable as well because of how cushy and padded that strap is across the foot. And I do of course like the squared off de design on the toe as well. It's something I'm always drawn to. Then we've got a couple of items from Oriton. I have been eyeing up their new collections. I really, really like their apparel actually. And this skirt I thought was really, really interesting. So it's essentially a tube skirt and a navy. So I like that because again, it's not quite black, but very, very versatile and easy to pair. It has this button detail down the side, which you can either leave buttoned up. So it is a tube skirt or you can unbutton it part of the way, the whole way to have a really nice slit on the side. But the thing that is really interesting and unique is the fact that the bottom half of the skirt is essentially this open weave knitted design. And I think that's really cool. It's almost got a little bit of a peekaboo effect. So you can see the silhouette of your legs through the skirt. And I don't really think that this would be something that would be suitable for the office, but definitely something that'd be a bit more fun for wearing at home. Maybe if you're working from home a lot, this could be a way to sort of elevate your outfit while still being comfortable at the same time. Just thought that was cute and actually I thought it would look really sweet with this camp shirt. I'm really into the whole camp shirt trend and the design on this one I think is just beautiful. I like that it is, again it's navy, but then it has those softer lighter blues and it's got this really pretty sort of swallow print with the, that almost looks like a New Zealand's Pahutakawa Waratah, almost looks like a Waratah flower. I think it's really neat. Uh, and also having those really stark white buttons down the center to create some additional contrast. That one has absolutely caught my eye and yeah, definitely one I'm gonna be sitting on. Then we have from Basic. Oh, I love these. I wanna go and try them on. Okay, yeah, it looks like they've got plenty of sizes. So I actually might go in store and try these on. They're a pointed toe flat. And you probably noticed I'm really, really drawn to pointed toe flats at the moment. These I thought were really cute. They come in a few, a couple of different colors. So the army green, which is a little bit different and almost has this kind of ruddy, muddy sort of a quality to it. Almost feels a little bit mossy, like something that you're gonna find in the earth, which I like. Uh, but then it does come in your classic black as well, which almost has a bit of a faded appearance to the uh, color uh, in terms of the saturation of it. But I thought they were really, really cute and they have a little bit of a Celine-esque feel to them. They do remind me or feel a bit reminiscent of some of the shoes that Phoebe Philo designed when she was at Celine. But a good classic, I don't think you'd go wrong and being suede. I mean, they look so comfortable. These look like they would be like walking on clouds, like they wouldn't give my bunions any grief. Uh, then I want to end, I mean, look, I've still got the Stella skirt from Lee Matthews on my wish list that's sitting there. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to do it. So there's a couple of slip skirts here. This one I like because it's got the uh, extra strip of fabric at the hem, which I think is really, really beautiful. I like the long length of it. And I think this is a really classic design. I've got friends who have it, who have told me definitely go for it. So I might actually splurge on that one sometime soon watch this space. Then for my kit, uh, these sandals. Again, see this is actually something that's very reminiscent of Phoebe Philo's shoe designs at Celine. They remind me of, um, I'll put a photo on screen of the shoes they remind me of. When I saw them immediately, I thought I would really like to add those to my closet. Even though they are a little bit higher than I would normally go for with a heel, they're five centimeters high, which is a pretty decent heel height. But I like the way that the straps wrap around the foot, that they've got the toe ring sort of design, uh, and they're relatively minimal otherwise. So I thought those would be really, really sweet. And actually they have gone in and out of stock because I've been eyeing them up for a really, really long time. Then I was gonna buy them because I got this email telling me I had 15% off and then I kind of let that, that week elapse. And by the time I went to go and purchase them and put in my discount code, it was no longer valid. So kind of stopped me from making a purchase and buying a whole bunch of other things, uh, which I was gonna get for the kids. And then I've got two pairs of shoes to finish on, both of which are quite similar. <laughs> so I love a sling back. First pair from Manolo Blahnik. I don't think I'm gonna get these, but the reason why I bookmarked them is they reminded me of what I am looking for. 
I've been looking for a replacement for a pair of opening ceremony shoes which I purchased about 9 or 10 years ago and you kind of see there's a little bit of a theme here when I really like something uh, and I can see it's an enduring style of my wardrobe I want to kind of I want that item to sort of stick around now those shoes I eventually wore into the ground so initially they actually had a strap which went across the foot and it broke on one shoe so I just cut them off and wore them like slingbacks and that was totally fine and since then I've been actually looking for a shoe that is intentionally a slingback because I, I really like that with a low heel I don't love the heel design on this but everything else is definitely what I'm looking for so the heel almost has this curved angle shape and then it has almost a pyramid style here, you know and then the base of the heel is almost pyramid style it's just a little bit too exaggerated for what I want in this shoe I want it to be very basic I want it to be a chunky block heel something that is really sturdy robust and will withstand a lot of walking so that's kind of one of the reasons why this isn't going to make it into my cart but the actual style itself it's just reminding me that this is a very specific shoe that I want to add to my wardrobe Finally, from Tibby, the Cameron suede sandal in the brown. I've been umming and ahhing over whether or not I purchase these shoes because I have the Olas, I've got them in the grey, and I really, really want to get the Olas in the, in the burgundy. I think they are just divine, such a rich colour, and a really nice option to have, especially if you wear a lot of neutrals. Looks great with kind of creamy colours, also looks great with camels, with greens, with um, navies and blacks. But these are interesting because they're suede. I think the patent version would be a bit more practical for me and I prefer the heel shape on the Olas as opposed to this Cameron suede sandal. But they're just one that I've been thinking about. I don't need to spend this much money on another pair of sandals, really. Uh, I have a bit of a shoe problem, especially with the exchange rate from the US being so bad as it currently is. But I think that they're a stunning shoe and if these are anything like the Olas they will be incredibly comfortable uh, especially with the suede it will have a lot more give to it as well because the Olas have this patent crinkle. So yeah that is kind of a little bit of a peek into my bookmarks into the items that I've been saving and that I am just kind of casually admiring from afar right now <laughs> or and a few items that I've just really kind of crossed off my wish list for good but yeah I hope that you enjoyed this video and kind of getting a little bit of an insight into some of the things that are inspiring me and I suppose that might actually drive and shape my style and what I'm wearing in the near future so yeah thank you for joining me I want to know what's on your wish list um, I will have everything I mentioned linked in the description box below if you want to go and have a look at anything but yeah thank you so much for spending some of your day with me as always and I will see you next time with a brand new video see you very soon bye